Welcome back. The MacBook M1 Pro is an amazing computer. I will give it a 9 out of 10 after using it for two weeks. The main thing I think needs improving is the control strip. That is really something I thought would be useful, but I ended up changing it to the function key default. The other thing is the trackpad. It's an amazing large trackpad. I've noticed my thumb when touching the spacebar is triggering the trackpad causing the cursor to jump around and obviously a bit of frustration there. Apart from that, everything on this computer is just amazing. I am still happy I purchased the Pro over the M1 Air because of a few things. I haven't actually used the fan at all. I haven't heard the fan. I mean, maybe it's spinning at a slower RPM in the background where I can't hear it or maybe it's not spinning at all. I haven't actually tested this computer to the maximum ability. Since here in Melbourne, Australia, we're moving into summertime, I think the fan will really help in those situations where a computer would get too hot. Apart from that, the high fidelity microphone when doing audio tests have proven to be really something that I think it's worth it to have in the Pro model. This is an audio test of the MacBook Pro M1 microphone, an audio test, one, two, three, four. When you're doing Zoom calls, when you're doing um, voice memos and, and short podcasts, just straight off of the MacBook itself. It's really good to know you have a semi-professional microphone inbuilt into the computer. So overall, the performance is amazing. The eight gigabyte model is handling Photoshop, Lightroom, multiple Chrome tabs with videos playing, downloading, even running a Zoom call. I really stress tested this machine. I won't go into detail about it, but it's you can hammer it. You really can push it to the limits. It will get to the point where it will just sort of stop in a different way but not in the way the intel machines just totally freeze up and you feel like that you can't do anything but reset your computer the m1s kind of freeze but allow you to do certain functions to end up freeing your memory up the way the rams integrated into all the other components of the computer mean that the 8 gigabytes really performs like a 16 gigabyte or even 20 gigabyte or so computer. Another amazing feature about the MacBook Pro M1 model is the brightness. Sometimes when I'm out working in my car, I notice that I can't see what's on the screen that well. And especially when I was using the MacBook Air, it just felt like I had to really look a bit closer to the screen to see the small details, especially on the 13 inch model. It's quite a relatively small screen. Having extra brightness in the MacBook Pro M1 is very beneficial. You can just turn it up a little bit when working outside or in your car, and a brighter screen will just give you that contrast and clarity you need when required. Let's talk about the case I purchased. This is the case that they sell on the Apple website for the MacBook Pro M1. It's the in-case design. It's just the clear version. I thought that would go well with the silver. I don't mind the little dots. I think it's a little bit pretty however it fits really well and it really helps show the silver design of this version using the computer over the last two weeks i've noticed that the battery life is absolutely amazing it's never let me down so in general the macbook air would go to about a third of its battery capacity over any given average day of use whereas the macbook pro goes to about half of its battery capacity after an average day of use thanks for checking out this video I hope it's helped you in deciding whether or not to buy a MacBook Pro. I understand you might want to wait for the M1X, it makes sense, but they're going to be really expensive. So either get the MacBook Pro or, or Air right now, um, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe, one love.